Hello, everybody. Give everyone a minute to filter in. Hello, hello, hello. Let everyone filter in, but thank you for joining us today. It's gonna to be a VFriends Road to Series 2 education session. Um, my name is Adam. I am helping out Gary at VFriends. I was a sports card collector for, I still am a sports card collector, but um, Gary transitioned me to all things VFriends. And so for the last many months, I've been learning all things NFTs and VFriends. Um, William, with your question, yes, it'll be, this will be, um, on the V Friends YouTube page, this whole recording. This whole recording. What's up, everybody? Um, my um, colleague Joe, it's spelled J Y O, should be in the chat to um, help answer any questions during the presentation um, and put up links, answer questions you guys may have. There's our man Joe. 1 a.m. here. Wow, Joseph, good for you. Well, just FYI, we do have them coming for the next many weeks, these sessions. So I definitely commend you uh, you being here though, but we will have these running. So I'll give everyone another minute to filter in and let me share my screen so we can get started with this uh, awesome presentation. Great. One more minute and then we'll get started. Um, we'll go through a slideshow on all things uh, basic NFTs and um, crypto, crypto wallets rather. Um, it's going to be pretty comprehensive, probably for about half an hour. And then after that, we'll go for about a half hour Q&A uh, at a hard stop for one o'clock. So it'll be an hour long session today. This will be recorded. Um, and all these resources here, um, sorry, one second. All of the resources that you see that you will be seeing today are all on this Road to Series 2 blog post that vFriends put out. Um, so you'll see here, education schedule. So again, there's a lot of these and they're going to be going on until uh, next month. The presentation that we see, the schedule, um, the vFriends YouTube channel, everything that you're about to look at, um, if you ever want to review anything, will be on this slideshow. Um, let me actually, I have to. Uh, Switch one thing up when I share. One second. Share my sound. Beautiful. Great. So I'm going to hop into it. Like I said, we'll do this whole presentation and then we'll go into QA afterwards. I do want to specify before we even start QA and everything that I would really appreciate if we can stick to questions based on what we're going to speak about and not so much like personal or super um, one on one questions. I'm happy to answer those on Twitter and I could. Uh, my Twitter is just my name. It's at Adam Rips, at Adam R-I-P-P-S. Um, and so I'm always happy to connect there. But as far as q and I would really like to focus on things that we cover here so I could be um, helpful to more people. So let's go into it. Let me make Joe my co-host. Boom, make co-host. And so again, Joe will be in the chat. Joe Minikawa to help you guys out with anything you may need. Road to series two, how to buy your first NFT. So first let's cover what a non-fungible token actually is. They are unique digital assets um, that you are probably seeing in a variety of industries from digital art to virtual real estate to collectibles. They're using gaming um, where the smart contracts of an NFT um, are being used in ways that were not before, so they are authentic, they are indivisible, unique, NFTs can be transferred, you can prove your ownership, and the blockchain, the, the blockchain in which they are stored on allows you to trace its history, check its authenticity, um, essentially verifiable digital assets. What is a crypto wallet? So in order to use your crypto, um, you will need a wallet. Uh, it's important because it is important to have a wallet because it is the kind of the connection between cryptocurrency and NFTs. So to buy an NFT, you will first need cryptocurrency, and then you'll use that cryptocurrency to buy NFTs. Um, and we'll go through how that uh, workflow is. 
Uh, when you create a wallet, you get something called a secret phrase. And we'll, we'll go through this in one minute, but I really want to stress how important that is. Uh, it's beyond the importance of a social security number or a bank pin or any type of personal info, because everything that is in a crypto wallet is actually linked to that 12 words. So if that were to get into somebody else's hands or you were to lose it, um, I'm sure you guys have possibly, you guys may have seen like stories of people losing millions of dollars in Ethereum or Bitcoin or getting hacked. Um, and that is all due to people losing those 12, that 12 word secret phrase. Uh, there are two types of wallets. One is called a software wallet, which is known as a hot wallet. And one is a hardware wallet known as a cold wallet. And so the difference between those is that a software wallet is stored all online um, and on your computer, whereas a hardware wallet actually has a physical piece, like a hard drive that you can hold um, to take things into the physical realm as well, um, which is just, that's usually more for peace of mind and higher level of security for more valuable assets. Uh, but for our focuses, and there's a lot of info we'll go into about more security, but we're going to go focusing on the hot wallet called MetaMask, um, which will be needed for anything you'll do anyway. So popular software wallets, which are directly connected to the internet, like I said, um, are MetaMask. And then you have a few others below um, that can also be used, but MetaMask is definitely like the number one uh, crypto wallet and the one that interrupt that operates and interconnects with like the most uh, Web3 and NFT platforms. Popular hardware wallets that we will touch on more at the end are Ledger and Trezor. Um, I know Ledger is one of our recommended ones that we do a lot more comprehensive education overview on. Again, these are for higher level, more expensive assets, or just for a higher peace of mind um, when transacting with NFTs. It's the physical component instead of just keeping it all online. As far as desktop versus mobile, um, there are different levels of operability between them. Um, a computer, a desktop is much more um, efficient and is easier to navigate on. There's also some more secure aspects to using a computer um, and just much smoother as a whole. On the phone, the software and everything around it is not as developed, so um, it could be a little bit more convenient to use a mobile and it definitely still works. But a lot of the issues that people come across in the NFT world are often from people using a mobile instead of a computer. So I would recommend a computer, but both of them are fine and everything that we look through now will be the same for both of those. So this is probably the most important video of the session. Um, it is how to set up a MetaMask wallet. And it kind of encompasses everything that you need from your crypto address to that 12 word phrase and how to keep it all secure. Um, so we're gonna watch this whole video. We have a few more, but we're not gonna watch the whole thing. This is about a 10 minute clip um, on how to set it all up. And it's all, you could always revisit it if you miss something or you wanna watch it over again. But this is just kind of a comprehensive overview that we want to make sure that you're doing everything right when you set up your wallet. So I'll click in. Today we're going to learn how to download and add the MetaMask wallet extension to our Google Chrome browser. We're going to use MetaMask because it's the most widely used wallet. Uh, there's other wallets available, but for our demonstration purposes, MetaMask is what we chose. So the first thing we're going to do is go to MetaMask.io, which is the website that you can download the extension. Always double check the URL whenever you're downloading or connecting your wallet to any site. We're very early into Web uh, 3.0, and one of the exploits that people use is creating a site that looks almost identical to a site that you're trying to go to um, and then being able to exploit you that, that way. So make sure it's the correct URL, uh, the correct .io, not .com or uh, uh, .org. In, in circumstances. So we're at metamask.io, which is proper. And we're gonna go to the top right and we're going to hit download. You can see the supported browsers, Chrome, Firefox, Brave, and Edge. Um, we're going with the most uh, user-friendly in my experience, which is gonna be Chrome. You can see that on the top, it has already prompted us to use Chrome. There is a tab for iOS and Android. But once again, we're gonna go with um, the easiest, which is going to be Chrome on our desktop. They do have mobile, but it is, um, it's less buggy and it's a much easier experience with the desktop and Chrome. So that's what we're suggesting here. So it's gonna say install MetaMask for Chrome. And it's going to bring us to the Chrome web store and we want to add to Chrome 
and we want to make sure it's the, uh, the correct one, which it is. And you'll see a video on the bottom from the MetaMask team, and we always suggest getting as much information as possible. And add the extension. Um, so we can navigate away from the Chrome store, see the extensions uh, tab, and uh, we want to actually add it to the, the top bar. So we'll cl click that and then pin it. And now you can see the cute little fox on the top right there. So once we click there, um, we want to open up the MetaMask site and you'll be able to see uh, that we go to MetaMask and that we can get started. Uh, but first check out that the fox will follow our mouse. Uh, so get started. And here you have two options. We're going to use yes, let's get set up. That's for someone with no wallet or anything like that. The other option, no, I already have a secret recovery phrase, is if you've already uh, set up a wallet, which uh, for our purposes, you have not. So let's get start. Let's get set up. Uh, help us improve MetaMask. I would read through this. Do your own research. Um, it's not going to be giving your information, um, like uh, exposing you in any way. So I clicked agree, but um, check it out and uh, read it yourself. Uh, we'll create a password. And with this password, I want you to um, write it down on a piece of paper. Uh, I don't like to keep my passwords or recovery phrase on my computer. Um, we'll get to that in the security section. Um, but let's click that and um, move forward. So now that we have this password, um, we're going to go to secure your wallet here. Um, so let's take a little bit of time to talk about um, what a secret recovery phrase is. Um, it's a 12 word phrase that is your master key to your wallet and your funds. So I can't stress how important the secret recovery phrase is. Everyone wants it, every scammer is going to be trying to get it. You might hear uh, seed phrase, uh, That's it was called seed, uh, seed phrase before secret recovery phrase, um, but it's basically the same terminology. Um, so uh, you're, you're going to be writing this down on a piece of paper, not keeping it on your computer because it can get uh, exploited. And I'd write it on a couple of pieces of paper and put it in a couple of different places. Um, and then you would want to watch this video and um, read the information on this little tab. But um, I want to stress how important it is. It's your bank information. It's your social security you know, number. It's if they have access to your wallet and your seed recovery phrase, they have access to everything in your wallet and all your NFTs, all your funds, um, and hopefully all your NFTs are going to be valuable and precious to you. So we want to make sure that you're as safe as possible. And um, let's hit next. So secret recovery phrase, once we click here, um, for our purposes, we'll show it because this is just kind of a test. But once we click this, it shows you the, tw the 12 words, the holy grail of your password. So make sure you write this down on a piece of paper a couple of times exactly in the order that it is. If you lose this, you lose everything. And if you give this up, you give up everything. So I'm hoping that I am stressing this enough for you. Um, we want to write this stuff down. We're going to need that. But um, some tips on the right. Um, store this phrase in a password manager. Like I, I would not do that. Um, write this on a piece of paper. I would do that. Um, memorize this phrase. Uh, I have people that memorize it. Just be careful. If you memorize it, you might be quick to uh, use it. Um, so you always want to you want your brain to always know if someone asks for that, you want everything to come to a, a, a screeching halt. Um, but here, let's confirm that um, exactly how we saw it on the page before. Um, and I'll take this time to continually <laughs> stress how important um, the secret recovery phrase is. So um, yeah, uh, always make sure that you're you're keeping it safe, please. Um, we will talk about it in security, but like, Pretty much no one will ever ask you for your secret recovery phrase. A website will not ask you. So if any website does, even if it's Firefox, there's potentially an exploit there. Everything should come to a complete halt in your mind and you will want to reset and make sure everything is safe.
never give it up. So congratulations, you've, you've downloaded and added the extension to uh, Google Chrome. You've done it, you now have a wallet, and we're very, very proud. Um, so read through all the information, and we wanna click um, I'm done here, and then we'll go check out the wallet a little bit. So it's just saying what's new. Um, they're talking a little bit about uh, where transactions are easier to read. Um, but in your wallet, you're basically going to be looking at your options here, buy, send, swap. Um, those are all going to be the kind of third party, uh, um, you know, uh, things, but the most important I would say is under account one is going to be your, um, your public wallet address, which you're going to be giving that to people that, you know, you want to send money to, or if they want to send you something, it's, it's not a secret or anything like that. You can, you can, you can give that out pretty regularly and it's not a problem. Uh, but let's go to buy. Um, you can deposit ETH um, through here. Like I said, these are third-party um, apps. So uh, we'll go over that a little bit. But send, you would put in if you wanted to send money to somebody like me. You could put my wallet address in there. Uh, and then if you want to swap ETH for a different token, you can as well there. Um, so those are basically the the, the pretty standard options um, for your wallet. Uh, on the bottom there, it says assets and activity. So assets, when you get something, you'll see it. And then activity, it'll show you that as well. We'll go over that more a little bit later. Um, and then you can see, uh, you can create a new wallet. Um, you can set up your hardware wallet. And there's different networks. Um, all things we'll go over. But I do want to stress how um, lovely it's been setting up the wallet with you. Awesome. OK. So that was super comprehensive. Uh, thank you all for watching. Um, and we will continue, but please rewatch that if there's anything that you'll need to um, rewatch, or if you want to, if you wanted to, you know, reiterate how important that uh, that code is, it's everything. So just uh, be very careful about that. Okay. Today we're going to learn Oops. how to download and add the MetaMask wallet. Let's move on. Great. So how to buy Ethereum? So the workflow is basically setting up that MetaMask account um, and then setting up a crypto exchange. So you could actually buy Ethereum to get in there. Um, Nick, we're going to do a Q&A afterwards, um, after the, uh, the session. So if you could stop raising that hand, that'd be great. But anyway, how to buy Ethereum. Um, the number one Ethereum exchange will be Coinbase. Uh, I know overseas, I know Binance and Gemini are very popular and uh, PayPal is also an option. But for all intents and purposes, Coinbase is the way to go. Um, a, few, a popular question I get is like, how come you can't just buy it straight on MetaMask? And the answer is you can, but there are a lot of restrictions from state to state and country to country. And there's a lot of um, a lot of limits as to how much you can purchase. So Coinbase is definitely the way to go. Um, it's more convenient and it's more reliable. I'm going to click through this video on how uh, to set up an exchange account, just kind of like a, a how to a quick run through. And um, we can, you can always revisit this video again for more of a hello today. We're going to and full look at it, but I just want to click through and make sure that I'm giving you all the key details that we can. So you'll go to coinbase.com, which is the main place that you can buy Ethereum. And Ethereum is the main cryptocurrency that you'll use for NFTs. Um, Bitcoin is not really used for NFTs. Uh, it's really Ethereum. It's the most comprehensive and widely used. So on the top right, you'll be able to press sign up um, where you will have to enter some info, um, first name, last name, et cetera, to create an account. You might get a little bonus for, for signing up. You'll have to um, get a verification email to confirm it. And as well as a text, it'll ask you to confirm that you are who you are. Uh, it'll have you verify your identity with some of your, your basic info and important things that they need to know that you are who you are um, and so that they can match up payments in the future. It'll ask um, how much you want to trade, what industry you work in. It's, it could be filled in. Of course, there's no way to exactly tell how much you'll be able to trade, but just to the best of your ability. Uh, and then you'll have to verify your identity. Again, this is just because everything is very secure with, with how they operate, which is great. 
um, there will be a level of verification that they need from you. So this involves, if you can see, he's on settings where his account limits are. And in order, you'll see on the right side that uh, sending and receiving cryptocurrency is disabled. That's because before you send anything, and this is important because sometimes people miss this, um, they need to verify their photo ID. And if this isn't done right away, there's sometimes some delays around it. So verifying your photo ID and the account limits is important, um, as well as enabling the send and receive. So what Joe's going to do here on this video um, is he's pressing verify photo ID, and he can take a photo or he can upload whatever he wants to do. Photo front and back of a license or a passport um, is the best way to go about that. And then on enable, send and receive, you'll see that it says you're almost ready to buy. Please complete your account. And this is when you'll have to link a payment method. Um, so these are the options that pop up. They're all great. Um, I wouldn't recommend debit card because it's for much smaller amounts with, with more limits. And uh, I'll touch more on bank account, PayPal, and wire transfers on this infographic. Uh, a bank account, ACH transfer, has a $35,000 limit per day, I believe, which is obviously a, a strong amount. Um, you are allowed to do everything with that payment. However, it's important to know that sometimes it, it's sometimes could take longer than this. Personally, if I've dealt with it being longer than this, but at a minimum of three to five business days um, from when you buy the Ethereum to when you're actually able to transfer it to your wallet. So let's say there was an NFT dropping in two days. This would not be a, a way to, to invest in that or to buy Ethereum. Um, so it would be important to do this in advance, but that's a great option. Uh, a wire transfer is typically the same day um, use. So I could send a wire from my bank account to Coinbase. And let's say I were to click on uh, on wire transfer here, it would bring me to that necessary info and I'd be able to send that wire transfer and it would be available to send and use on the same day. So I do like that method as well. Um, and PayPal, I think has a thousand dollar limit daily. And that's a great method as well for smaller amounts, quicker amounts, it's pretty uh, user-friendly. So PayPal is also a great option there. But this again is on that uh, that blog post and on this video. And if you want to hear a little bit more about it or just, you know, it's, it's all over online, I would look up a little more about the payment methods, but several ways to buy Ethereum, to buy uh, deposit money into Coinbase and then transfer it to Ethereum. Hello, today we're going to learn how to sign up for Coinbase. Let's not. Okay. So this is probably one of the most important steps. Um, and it's once Hello, you buy that, today... once you buy that um, NFT, I mean, once you buy that um Sorry, once you buy Ethereum, how do you get it to your crypto wallet? So this is going to walk us through how to buy Ethereum on Coinbase and then how to get it into that MetaMask wallet. Uh, so very important video. And I know it could be a little bit uh, scary when it's actually happening, but I would rewatch this and get a step by step and just get familiar with how this works a little bit because um, it's definitely super, super helpful. So on the top right, there's this button that says send slash receive. Um, that is going to be what he presses on first. Oh, sorry. I, I, I apologize. The, but the buy slash sell. Forget we're going to buy Ethereum first and then um, transfer it. So when you press buy slash sell, it shows up. Buy slash sell. It shows up in Bitcoin. Uh, and we're going to be sure to switch that to Ethereum. I want to reiterate that Ethereum is the way to buy NFTs and the cryptocurrency you'll want to buy. He's already linked his bank account, which is super important. Uh, and so Wells Fargo, obviously, it'll vary by from person to person. So he's going to use his bank account to buy $250 in Ethereum. There won't be any delay here because it's a small amount. It's not like it's thousands and thousands of dollars. So when he, when he places this order, he can see how much Ethereum it's buying, 0.0766, uh, the price of Ethereum at the time, how much he's buying. And then Coinbase does have a small fee that they take, but nothing too crazy. Um, and so he can buy that and you'll see that his account uh, balance goes up. So he has that Ethereum and in his assets, it shows Ethereum. And then the next step that he can do is he's going to open up MetaMask. And so on the top of his screen, since he pinned it as an attachment, that little MetaMask box will be hanging down. When you click on that, um, it'll say account one. And so this big code below account one is going to be different for every single person, just like an email address or a home address, um, where that code is not your private key. It's important. This is your public address, that one ending in 929C. It's your public address, and that's going to be where you want to send all of your assets or uh, Ethereum to. And so by hovering over it, you can copy it 
just by clicking it and it'll copy that address unique to you. So that's your specific address, just like an email, just like anything else that's particular to you in this wallet. So he's in MetaMask and he's he pressed copy. And so he has that pinned to his account or to his keyboard. He'll then press send slash receive, which is when you'll be, he's pressing send all. You can choose any particular amount you'd like, but he's sending the Ethereum and he's paying with Ethereum and he's able to then paste in that address um, to that box. And what's very important here is that he's checking to make sure that they align. So the 929C and 929C do align and it's the exact same address. It's important to verify that. Um, and also for a first time user, instead of let's say sending $245, it might be better to send $2.45 just to make sure it gets there safely. Um, and then you can send the rest. So sometimes people do a test send, which is definitely recommended. And Hello, for peace of today mind. we're going what to learn how to- Sorry about that. So he can see how much he's sending, the fees around it. And he is pressing send. There is then a verification code that pops up that you'll have to enter in. And then once that is in, it'll show that the Ethereum is sent. And then it takes a little while sometimes to show up in the MetaMask account, sometimes a couple minutes, but usually pretty quick. And it'll show that the money was received from Coinbase and it's now in his uh, MetaMask account to use. And so just to clarify, that's important. It's important for people to do because MetaMask is a, will allow you to connect to many different sites to buy NFTs. So for example, if you're buying something on eBay, um, you would connect PayPal, or if you're buying something on, you know, a site, sometimes it's kind of like PayPal for NFTs, MetaMask, where it, it has those funds in it and allows you to, to connect and, uh, and buy on different sites. So I walked through this a little bit, but this is just a great graphic to get familiar with and see which method is best for you. At the end of the day, they're all great, um, especially if you're not in a hurry. Um, but the timing and limits for each one is different and also varies from country and, and states, from country to country and state to state. Uh, so I would just check it out, you know, Google what's, you know, best way to buy cryptocurrency in New York and, and see where it brings you. But these are all great options. So this is a great video um, on how to buy an NFT on OpenSea. We're just going to do a quick, quick walkthrough on it. Um, but it's not, it's um, OpenSea is basically the eBay of NFTs where on the secondary market, um, people can transact on OpenSea.io. Hey everybody. And so this process is just basically showing you how to get familiar with MetaMask. I mean, sorry, with uh, OpenSea, how to connect your wallet. So then, you know, it's, it's, it connects a wallet. So then uh, you can shop on this site. Let me X this out. And it basically shows you how to search up different NFTs, how to look at different collections, what they mean, what if, how to check the floor price or the cheapest price available. Um, just how to kind of operate through OpenSea. And so I would definitely check this out, how to make an offer, which is important, how to buy something, the gas fees, how to you know actually confirm it. So this is when MetaMask pops up again and you're actually able to confirm these transactions. Um, and then that wallet leaves the, that money leaves the account and it shows owned by you. So as far as buying an, an NFT on the secondary market called OpenSea, I would definitely take a look and a, a deeper dive into this video. Hey everybody, today we're gonna to be going through the process of buying your Great, so when you buy your NFT or buy an NFT, how do you see it? The NFT is stored on the blockchain and it's assigned to your particular wallet address. Um, so let's say you're on OpenSea, you'd be able to view that your wallet owns that uh, NFT. While it's not actually stored on OpenSea, um, it will just show that you own it. Kind of just like how if you have something listed on eBay, you know, eBay doesn't own that item, you own it, but it's actually just shown in the pictures on eBay. It's very similar um, to how that works. And so it's important to know that the NFTs are pretty much just stored on the blockchain, just like how something's stored in your house, but there's many ways that you can see it or, or different, different places where you can view them. So we're not gonna walk through this right now because this is a super long video um, because it's very important when setting up a hardware wallet. But again, if you get to the point where you don't feel super, super secure and you want to get a hardware wallet that, that adds an extra level of security, being that it's a physical piece instead of all online, um, or you get higher level assets with their higher value and you want a higher level of protection. This is a great video from, from the VFriend squad um, that will help you with the complete setup of it to make sure you're doing it in a safe way um, from David, one of our, our Discord mods. David E4217 on Discord. Great. So now that we've gone through some of our, yep, perfect. Now that we've gone through some of our most important slides, 
I wanted to touch on safety and vigilance in Web3 and NFTs. Um, a lot of you guys have probably seen some scams and some scam attempts, or have even maybe tried to have been scammed on your own or have seen horror stories. And all of these things are very unfortunate. And they happen because the space is so new and there's many malicious and bad intentioned people out there. Um, so it's important to really protect yourself and we'll see a good way on how to do so. A great rule that if it's too good to be true, it, it probably is. Uh, so whether it's a fake email from a V friends team or a fake Gary about series two V friends. Um, and again, this, this to people who are new to the space, this list looks legit um, or it could be legit, which is why, or it looks like it could be legit rather, which is why it's important to um, protect yourself. I would recommend the V friends discord because um, it's just where all of the information that anyone will ever need is put out in those announcements, as well as where Gary ch chats and talks the most. Uh, so people do send fake email links with, with fake links. But, you know, for example, this is someone's trying to say it's time for series two V friends. Um, if you're in the discord or have a questions, people will always tell you that that's not happening until April. And so this would be fake. Um, you know, this is a, a Twitter account called Gary Vayren Chuck. And the, the account name is not even close to what Gary's actually is. And it's, it's very, you know, it's a, it's a scam attempt and it's trying to have somebody go to a fake link, which will likely ask them for the, that 12 word phrase. Um, there's fake Instagram accounts that try to lead you to the wrong places. And this is not only for vFriends, this is for so many projects and so many discords and so many Twitters. Um, so it's important to uh, kind of hone in on where you're getting your information and education and Discord and Twitters are the best way to do so for official accounts. Um, and it's also important to actually not click on like links that you get as, as direct messages in discord, because a lot of people, you know, a lot of scammers camp out in discord waiting for people. I would definitely, uh, make sure you're doing some, some due diligence around anything like this and never, you know, connect your wallet or make a purchase. If you're not completely certain that something's authentic, just another example. So this has been a common one where people are, are getting emails from uh, a, a fake vFriends email that is trying to get people to, to buy or to mint an NFT or to hack their wallets. Again, it's just so important to, to really confirm that things are legit. For example, this vFriends, oh, sorry, vFriends are on the 25th floor of, of Hudson Yards, or that's where Rainer Media is. And like, it's, this is just, you know, to me, it looks very fake, but to beginners and such, it's, it's important to get in the Discord ask questions, never do anything that you're not completely certain about. No one will ever really correct, connect you, uh, sorry, contact you super directly one-on-one -on -one asking you to, to do something, especially if it's not, you know, official looking um, or in our Discord or on our Twitters. Another way that people try to manipulate people is by saying that Gary actually owns their NFT project or Gary's bought this NFT project or, or anything like that saying, oh, Gary just has, they'll say Gary owns 20 of these. Meanwhile, they, that project just sent Gary 20 of them to say that to now market his name that they own 20 of them because you can send things to Gary's wallet um, for free. Uh, and so people try and scam people out of that. This is a great post on this slideshow where it actually walks through what Gary does and does not own or what he does buy and what, does he, what he doesn't buy. Uh, Google is actually a really great resource for all things NFTs. Um, and so you can, if you're curious about things or have questions, what is crypto? What are altcoins? What are NFTs? What is mining? Who created Ethereum or Bitcoin or whatever your question may be? Um, there are a lot of great resources, videos, podcasts, um, articles, whatever it is out there. Um, especially by the company called 137 PM, which is a, one of Gary's publishing companies that is one of the leading um, outlets of content for NFTs in particular. So I would definitely recommend 137 PM and just exploring YouTube or whatever type of learning you like to do around the NFTs. Google is a, is a good resource. Now that we've touched on so much, I wanted to go through some of our key terms that we've learned um, or that we haven't touched on yet uh, rather. So that wallet address is basically like your home address, your mailing address um, on the blockchain. And so that's where your things are stored or it's where your things can be viewed and what, what assets are connected to, um, where you can send your Ethereum. So it's important that that's where you'll be able to own uh, your assets. Gas, when you make a transaction on the blockchain, you guys may have heard of something called a gas fee. Um, 
what you're essentially doing every time you, what anyone is doing anytime they make a crypto transaction is paying Ethereum miners to make that transaction happen for you through computing and, and everything of like that. Um, and so uh, there are times where gas is very expensive because there's a lot of people trying to make transactions at the same time. And sometimes where it's not that expensive because um, there's not that many people trying to make transactions. So essentially what gas is, is like a supply and demand of the blockchain, how many people are trying to transact at once and how that affects the price. Um, this is a site that allows you to check uh, if the gas price at the moment is low or high. Minting, when someone mints an NFT, they're verifying a new transaction on the blockchain. I compare this to when somebody waits outside of Nike or Supreme or whatever store it may be to buy the shoes from them in the first place. They're the first owners of that shoe, which they can then sell on eBay. Um, or StockX or whatever the site may be. Very similar with NFTs that when somebody, somebody mints an NFT, they're the original first buyer of that piece. And then they're allowed to either hold it or sell it on the secondary market. We've already talked a lot about the secret phrase, but just please, 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 please. No one will ask you for it. If they do, it's a huge red flag. Um, and it's important to keep secure. NFTs stand for non-fungible token. And so a lot of people just refer to them as tokens, which can be used um, interchangeably. Uh, signing. So when that MetaMask popped up on the side, when you buy something or make a transaction and it says confirm, that's you signing that transaction, which is essentially just like putting pen to paper and authorizing permission for that transaction to occur. So some great resources, if anybody wants to dive in a little bit more, are all of these articles, some from Gary's site, some from 137 PM, others from vFriends. Um, and it's basically pretty comprehensive of all different types of questions you may have, whether it's about vFriends collections or OpenSea or NFTs or crypto. Um, some great articles here that, uh, that we've used in the past. I know a lot of you guys are probably interested in vFriends, so I'll do a quick, quick, quick run through on what vFriends collections are out there so far. Back in May of uh, 21, Gary launched vFriends Series 1, uh, just over 10,000 NFTs that Gary released um, about different animals like Patient Panda or Happy Hermit Crab or Gutsy Gecko, uh, where he made characters based off traits that he admires. And while he will always provide value and these will be his main priority for the rest of his career, um, each NFT serves to three years of v, uh, access to three years of VCOM, which is a super conference that Gary is throwing. Um, the first one will be in May of this year. Um, VFriends Mini Drops is just a smaller collection that Gary does surprise and delights for holders of the VFriends Series 1s for. Um, Book Games is a collection that Gary did when on in late August, he held a 24-hour live stream or a three-hour live stream where he said within a 24-hour period, for every 12 of his new book, 12 and a half that somebody orders, they'll get a free NFT. So if somebody bought, you know, free NFT, they'll get an NFT. Um, so if someone bought 120 books, they would they got 10 NFTs. If someone bought 24 books, they got two NFTs. Um, and so this was launched at the beginning of this year. Um, and there's a few different rules and there's a, it's a lot of info. So book games is a good thing to check out. It's kind of the lowest access into Gary's world, the lowest price access. Um, and VFriend Series 2, which is why a lot of us are here now, will be launching in April of uh, 2022. And they will be under $1,000 US um, converted to Ethereum. So whatever Ethereum is at the time, Gary will say it's just under $1,000 um, in that amount. And so there's no quite set release yet, but the Discord is the best way to stay in touch with all of this. It's going to be a great way to get into Gary's world and the VFriend's world at a, at a lower amount. Um, Great. So this is everything that we've got today. Again, I, uh, I really appreciate everyone who's listened. I'm going to stick around for questions. If you do have to go, feel free, but I really, 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 you know, you should be proud of yourself for attending and, and we're glad that to, to have you here. Um, we'll go until one o'clock. So about 20 minute Q&A. I I really would like to reiterate that um, it is very important that I answer questions that are about what we chatted about here. Um, because if it's one-on-one -on -one scenarios, I don't want to waste, you know, other people's times as they're waiting to ask more general questions where I want to help a, a broader array of people. Um, so I will ask you guys to raise your hand if you have questions specific to, to what we've chatted about today. I think you can react on the bottom with a, a raise your hand and I can start to call some people up who have any questions and uh, we can go for about 20 minutes and, and run through as many as I can.
Great, Sharif, Sharif, I'll, uh, I'll unmute you or I'll ask to unmute you. Hi, man. Uh, I'm new. I'm from the other part of the world. I'm from Egypt, and I just joined right now while I'm driving in a very, very uh, in traffic, actually. And I just joined the NFT world in general in like uh, five days ago, and I'm super excited. Uh, I've gathered a couple of friends, and we like we decided to go ahead and invest in the NFTs, and we've been spending five days now, days and nights over the internet, you know, trying to to look for everything. We understood and we got that uh, Gary V is the number one in the world and this guy is a legend. So we're in for the NFT in April. We're, we're definitely in. We, we just want to know uh, because I joined late. I joined only about five minutes ago. I just want to know how much the NFT would be and uh, if I if we could mint during the during this or if we could get whitelisted or something. And thank you very much, man. You're welcome. Um, so definitely drive safe. I'll, I'll try and keep this concise and I'll give you a resource to check out afterwards, but you're definitely doing the right thing by doing a lot of homework. Gary says 50 hours or 50 days of homework. Um, so it's, it's definitely important. Um, v Friend Series 2 in May will be under $1,000 in Ethereum. Um, there will be a public mint um, where, where people can buy. I mean, a lot of this info is actually going to be rolled out tomorrow through a blog post, I believe, um, or potentially early next week. Um, but under $1,000 to a public mint and Gary's collection called book games. So I would look up Gary V book games or vfriends.com slash book games, I believe is the link um, where you'll be able to see a little bit more of those rules. But one of the rules of book games is that it will give you um, the potential of an early access mint um, where, you know, also known as a whitelist, but it's referred to as the V friends friends list. Um, and a lot of that info will be live on the site tomorrow. So I would check out a V friends blog sometime either tomorrow or over the weekend where you can get some more info. Cool. Um, I will unmute Zephania. I'll ask you to unmute. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. How's it going? Yeah, how's it going? Good. How are you doing? Uh, I, I just joined this actually my first, uh, you know, um, blog meeting or anything like this, be friends. Um, <clears throat> so I've been following Gary for a while and uh, I'm new to the whole like, cryptocurrency world, uh, NFT thing. I've been doing all of my research. I've been watching YouTube videos nonstop for weeks. Um, I kind of have like, I'm at this point where I have my life savings. Um, you know, it's it's not much. I have, I have two young children, um, went through a really hard separation. I'm working a nine to five um, and I'm kind of just, inquiring about where to start um i know this is the whole thing about getting into it um but i was just kind of like wondering for advice what would you do if you had 10k and you were starting from nothing you know what's a good step you know um for sure for sure it's a it's a great question um number one call out is gary is very very passionate and very vocal about never spending more than you're willing to lose or that a lot of people they'll over leverage themselves um, and spend too much when, you know, it's, it's money that they can't really afford to play with. So he thinks of it as like, you know, he's, he's investing in things that he's confident in and many others as well. Um, but there's also, it's very unpredictable. It's very volatile. No one really, you know, quite knows, especially with individual projects, you know, how they're going to perform in the short and the long term. Um, and so that's always important to keep in mind is like, he's, you know, a lot, you know, it's always like, a lot of people think of it as like, they're going to buy some things and like, just learn the technology, which is important. And, you know, learn how it works and, and they're kind of paying for that education in a way. Um, Gary's projects have historically done pretty well. Um, and so I do think that VFriend series two is, you know, a, a solid thing to look at. Um, and it's going to be well below that budget. Uh, okay. But it's just, it's important not to, important to, to not over leverage or not feel like any type of obligation because it's still so early in the space where 10,000, you know, we've seen stories of people turning 10,000 into 100,000 or 10,000 into, you know, whatever, but a lot of, a lot of people make it zero or turn it into zero. Um, and it's, it goes to nothing the next day. And so while there's some great stories out there, it's, it's important to, to, to really be cautious and keep learning. Um, but I think Gary's project in, in series two is, is awesome. Uh, and we'll start, we'll, we'll keep learning more about that, but not over leveraging is important for sure. Definitely. I, I have one, one more question. So, yep. um, I've, I've been looking at all the eBay videos and like, um, 
the flipping thing? Do you, do you think that's a safe uh, investment? Do you think that's something that's actually a possibility? Or is that really kind of hit or miss? You said eBay flipping? Yeah, well, Gary has all of his uh, – his, yeah, yeah, like he does talk. trash talk where he goes yeah. to, to yeah, he, and people love that, and I think he finds it more reliable because there, I think okay. I remember one video that he did where someone's like, "I have five hundred dollars, what should I do?" And like yeah. NFTs, and they're like, you know, you should go and flip things for a year and turn that five thousand into twenty thousand, and then use okay. that to go flipping with. I think he finds it more reliable, and he also loves the grind of like cross selling. But yeah, I think it's uh, that's a more proven and, and reliable way of generating income as opposed to nfts in his mind and, and i tend to agree well i really appreciate all your your uh, feedback you got it you got it all right take care all right um i'm only selecting on this person because they're physically raising their hand instead of digitally so i'm going to unmute them because i've never seen that and i like it hey brother uh, yeah, for some reason, I couldn't see the, the hand raising. thing. No worries. But uh, um, thanks for the video. But my question is for the book game tokens, uh, like what combination do they have to be? I was reading on the Discord channel today that they're like needed to be like five wood or something to be qual qualified for like VCon or like patient pig lava wood frame is like the way to go. Like, could you just please get some clarification on like how many to have and which combinations to have? <laughs> I wish I could. I'll try and be as, as specific as I can without, you know, Gary, Gary is kind of this game master in the Discord where he can select whatever he'd like to do. Um, there's a few ways that book games will be used in the future. Um, upcoming will be um, a process where for the new Series 2 NFTs, um, they will be selected at random. And so he said that like the different, uh, for as far as like the friends list early minting for Series 2, the rarity of the token or the frames or anything won't matter. So that's not as critical there. Um, where it does matter is for series two, he's introducing 15 new V friends characters and he will allow people to get those new characters exclusively through book games. And that's where he said that five of the same frame matter and, and he'll, he'll allow people to do it with five of the same frame. Um, but I don't know exactly which ones but a, a combo of five frames he said will be important. I just, I, I don't know any uh, additional things. And I do think that VFriends will put some more content out on that as it comes closer, but that's kind of his hinting for now. Okay, so five frames allows you like per one character, like per one. Yeah, yeah. So like, you know, five black frames might do something and five wood frames might do another and five gold frames might give a different character. But yeah, for all the, for the new characters, he's going to be focused on the on five of the same frames. Okay, and, and you said he's going to be a blog post tomorrow about it as well to get... I know tomorrow's that. blog post is more about the friends list for Series 2. I don't know exactly how all, how everything's rolling out, um, but there will be more info. I think there's one blog post so far on like specifically how to burn for those new characters, but there's no specifics released yet as far as like which which uh, frames match up to what. The only thing Gary's put out, I think, is like the Fearless Fairy V friend will need like five fur frames or, or you know, fur frames for the Fearless Fairy. So he's playing around with that, but nothing, nothing super specific is out there yet. Okay. Well, I think that's my question. So just five frames. Got it. You got it. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. All right, Ty, I'll ask you to unmute. Hey, hey, how's it going? Man? Yep. What's up, Ty? Hello. Not sure what just happened. So yeah. sorry, I, I was in the middle of moving and accidentally muted myself. No worries. Hey, but um, my question was going to be: so I'm trying to get into the NFT space, and I have personally been looking a lot more at blue chip NFTs, but obviously they're much more expensive than you know the average consumer might be able to afford. So I was wondering, what are the things that you would look into, or that you at least need to see in a non blue chip NFT that would make you consider you know getting into it yeah it's, it's a good question and and yeah i mean it's a it's a crazy game right now but um nfts really and especially when you hear gary speak about it it's all in the hands of the creators and the people behind it just like how business is only as good as you know the people who are who are running that business it's, it's and uh so what i think of potential like blue chip nfts which is a term that's used lightly these days or loosely rather 
um, I kind of think of it like when I was, I collect basketball cards. And so there's like Michael Jordan and LeBron James who are very expensive and very, you know, solidified and, and legends. And then there's people who are much younger who, who don't have as much experience that are much cheaper. And it's, it's really just about betting on the creators of a project um, and their ability to drive value long-term. So there's definitely an opportunity where like some of these projects now and some of these artists now are going to be um, amazing and, and grow in the long-term, but a lot of them are not. And so it's really just a game of, do you believe in the people that are behind the project or the team behind it or the artists behind it? Um, because it's all about their ability to, dr to drive value. Um, so just like how there's super like 21 year old NBA players who you can buy their sports cards of now before they blow up, it's the same for NFTs, but a lot of those 21 year olds in the NBA don't end up to be Michael Jordan or LeBron James. And so it's important exactly. to like, you know, a lot of them don't have the upside that people hope, but that's why Gary says, don't spend more than you're willing to lose. Cause if you put too much money into someone and they don't pan out, it's not, or into a project that doesn't, you know, come to fruition. It's just, it's a, uh, it's not a great scenario to be in. And so I think it's just like your personal feel on how you, how confident you are in a creator, which is why Gary's projects are so valuable because Gary is a, a proven businessman and a proven operator. Um, and people rely on that and, and see that and has seen, what he's done, has seen what he's done in the past, which is why he's so valuable. But there's definitely artists who have untapped potential that are, that people invest into. Sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds like I just need to do my research. You got and, it. You know, focus whatever I'm considering, make sure to read everything that they have available for me. hundred percent and join their discords and, and their Twitter and just get a vibe for the project. And yeah, education is so key. All right. Thank you so much, man. You got it. All right. Hello. Hey, um, I have a question real quick. You got it. Um, I just got in this and I've been, uh, I've been watching Gary V, but I didn't get into Gary V for, uh, NFTs. Mm -hmm. Do you think Gary V will, uh, ever like start talking about, uh, different projects and not only his, uh, V friends? Do you think, um, he will get involved, like have V friends collabs with like, I don't know, board apes or, um, Sure. No, I, I get, I get the question hundred percent. He, okay. he has in the past, like he's, he's bought other projects. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he's invested pretty heavily in, in some other NFTs and some other creators. Um, and I think that blog post, which is on that site, which is, I mean, on the slides where it's like, what Gary, what NFTs is Gary only? Like, he's pretty public when he taught, when he buys an NFT is like, you know, why he likes X collection or why, why collection is so cool to him. So he has done it, done that in the past transparently. He's talked about how he has such an impact on the, on the value of those when he buys them because of his notoriety that like the price goes up too much or people, you know, yeah. people go into it afterwards, hoping to make a flip, but he's a long-term thinker. So he's, he's kind of tried away from that for a little bit because he just has too big of an influence on other projects when he does talk about them. Um, but as far as the V friends brand, like I, he's collaborated with a few artists, he's done a few brand collabs and it's definitely what he's looking to do in the future. Um, but I think like for this current time, he's like so heads down on V friends and series two. And he's mm -hmm. had some like crazy influences on projects in the past where he's just trying to lay low for a little bit longer, but he definitely has. And I think he will in the future as well. Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm currently door dashing trying to save up to, to get me some NFTs. I do the Amazon, the trash talk. I, I, I that's, that's what really got me into gear V, but yeah, this whole thing, uh, NFT is just moving so quick. You know, that's why I'm here. It's crazy. And he's, he's the number one man of like, do your own research. And when he buys an NFT and someone just goes to it right away, it's the opposite of what he preaches. Um, so he, it's a little bit dangerous, but yeah, he's, uh, he's definitely vocal about the NFT community. And I think he'll, he'll continue to like, you know, bring other projects up with him and, and be involved, awesome. but he's been heads down on series two. Awesome. Thank you. That's, that's all I had. <laughs> you got it. You got it. All right. Let's see. I got five, 10 more minutes. So I'll got Nicholas, Ryan, and then uh, I'll ask this person to unmute here. Hello. Hey, how are you? I'm good. What's up? Oh, um, I just thought I'd share some insightful education since we're talking about, you know, cold wallets and stuff. I've, uh, 
I've got, you know, three cold wallets and another hard wallet. I know better, but you can still fall into that trap. So what happened to me was I got into a liquidity pool through a Coinbase wallet. It's not as secure as your Trezor, Trezor or your um, whatever one you use, right? So I got in there and I got in 30 grand deep. And they took it all. Mm. So it can happen to anybody. I've been doing this long enough. I knew better, but don't get greedy. And that's essentially what I did. I'm building a project, not going to get into it, but I, I'm, I'm working on my thing. And I got so driven to uh, outsource to different people that the chance for a few extra bucks was there. And I went yeah. for it. And now I'm backwards. So even if you are educated, still step back and think about it because your hard wallets are the only solution. They're the only solution. That's that's all I wanted. That's, to a, add. that's a that's a great point, and we appreciate it. It's a big call out. I'm sorry that happened, and it just goes to the point in my mind where it's like it's so hard to trust people in the space because people are anonymous or they just do things to to trick people. It's so important to like really nail that in that bad things. There are very bad people, and and even if some something sometimes things seem legit or they seem you know, right, but they're just not, and it's not clicking. Um, but yeah, hardware wallets are such a great solve. Um, but even with the hardware wallets, just to reiterate again, if somebody got the words that go to your hardware wallet, because there are still those secret words, it still relies the same, it still remains the same that people can take assets with that that secret phrase. Um, but yeah, hardware wallets are a great solve, especially for, you know, peace of mind and for security. It's a, it's a very unfortunate thing that happened. Um, but important to learn from and appreciate you bringing that to, to everyone here to like the dose of reality. Yeah, it can happen to anybody. It doesn't matter how much you understand. You can slip through the trap, the cracks. And like you said, all you have to do is really have that 12 uh, word seed phrase mm -hmm. sitting next to your computer and someone hack your computer. They can get your camera easier than you think. That camera needs to be hidden when you're writing that stuff down. That's also important that some people don't think about. They think because they're sitting there with their phone in front of them, there's no way someone's recording it. Well, that camera on that phone could be compromised and you're just not thinking about it. That's wild. Yeah, it's, it's a great call out. It's uh, important for everyone to know. So thank you. You're welcome. Joe, you got something? Well, first of all, hello, everybody. It's good to see everyone in here. Um, I was wondering, uh, and I don't want to jump, but do you know, uh, there's someone in the chat, Ryan, who is having trouble with connecting his hardware wallet to Immutable X, which I told him you shouldn't use your hardware wallet to connect to any sites, mm -hmm. you should have a transaction wallet for that, but do we have any step-by-steps for, for that that you're aware of, or, um, I know, I know the step-by-step. -step for a normal wallet is on that book games blog for a ledger. I'm not hundred percent sure. I would probably advise to open a ticket in the discord. And I think, right. And then of course, or may might be able to handle that. Yeah. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure exactly. It. I think opening a ticket in the V friends discord will, will be the best way to get some, some help on that. All right. I'm, I'm hopping out. Just wanted to say hi and good job, Adam and okay. everyone else. All good. All right, Nicholas. And then this person here, and then, uh, and then we'll, we'll jump. I'm asking you to unmute. All right, I'll go on to oh, all right, I'll go on to Nicholas for now. Nicholas, I'll ask you to unmute. Hello. How's it going? Hey, good. Thanks. Uh, thank you for the education. Thank you for taking my question. I'm very, very new to this. So this is a very basic question that you I, that I may have missed discussing it earlier uh, regarding MetaMask and your Ethereum in MetaMask again, basic and stupid, but does that Ethereum fluctuate when it's in your MetaMask wallet? That's a great question. And then there's no such thing as a, as a stupid question at all, because it's also new. So I appreciate it. Um, great question. So let's say you were to, to up to, uh, to buy a thousand dollars of Ethereum. Okay. Um, so if you put a thousand dollars into Coinbase um, and you buy that Ethereum right now, the Ethereum amount will be locked in. So let's say Ethereum is at $3,000. You would get, you know, a third of an Ethereum. Um, 
and that would be locked in. That's how much you would get. So you buy Ethereum at the current rate um, whenever you make that transaction. From there, the US dollar amount of it can technically fluctuate, but it'll always be you know the 0.33 Ethereum that you bought or the one third of Ethereum that you bought. Gotcha. Um, and so it doesn't fluctuate once you buy it. It'll fluctuate before and technically afterwards the US dollar amount fluctuates. Um, but no, it's, uh, it's whatever amount you buy it at, it'll stay at until you spend it or, or exchange it. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you again for doing this. You've got it. My pleasure. All right. One more and then, uh, then we'll wrap up. I've asked you to, uh, to unmute and then, uh, you can ask your question. All right. I've asked a couple of times now. I don't think he's going to ask. So, um, we're at one o'clock now. So that was great timing. Um, I was glad I'm able to, to get through a bunch of questions. Um, if anyone has anything additional, I will put my Twitter and I said my Instagram too, but I'm more active on Twitter for NFT stuff. This I get so much spam on everything, but, um, if anyone has any questions or, or has anything they want to chat about, feel free to shoot me a message. Um, and otherwise everything that you viewed will be rewatchable. The videos, the presentations are all on, um, Google and they're all on the V friends blog. And any further, you know, education is always helpful and, and we encourage it. So really appreciate everybody for, for coming out. Appreciate Joe for hanging with us and and um, and going to um, the chat and helping everyone out. One other last thing that Felipe said about that that makes a good point. Regarding the Ethereum rate, if it increases in value, then his one third will be worth more. For example, if Ethereum is 6,000, then that one third will be worth 2,000. So yeah. It fluctuates once you buy it, um, but that amount of Ethereum remains the same. So everybody, really appreciate it. Any more questions, please join the VFriends Discord. Follow us, message us on Twitter, VFriends on Twitter and Instagram, all of the above. Um, really, really appreciate it. We'll be doing sessions for a little bit longer if you have more questions or want to watch again. Um, and everyone have a, a great rest of your day. So really, really, really appreciate it. And everyone take care. Bye, everybody.